this will be a plain video. Sorry, I had to. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. One of the most common questions I get is, okay, what plane should I choose when I want to work with wood? I mean, do I use the little number three or do I have to pull out the big number eight anytime I want to join a board? Um, and I wanted to kind of go through what are some of the differences in it and also kind of touch base on the Stanley numbering system. I know that is a kind of confusing for a lot of people, so hopefully we can uh, make that a little bit easier to understand. So let's start down here at the narrow end and work our way up into what are some of the differences between them. The number three is an inch and three quarters wide, whereas the number four is two inches wide. Um, the, the thinner the iron is, the easier it is to push the wood, so you don't have to put as much force behind it to get it through. When you start getting into these wider irons, you have to put a lot more force with them to get them through the wood. And so a narrower plane is easier. So if you're working with difficult hard wood and you're wanting to smooth it out, a number three might be a great choice. It's easy to push through the wood. It flows through things easier. Um, the other big difference is that the number three is shorter than the number four by about an inch. And uh, that allows it to ride up and down through the valleys. As you go through these numbers, they get larger and longer. So the number three is a lot shorter than the number eight. And the difference for that is sometimes when you're finally finishing a board, you don't care as much about flat. You just want to take that wispy shaving off, that amount that you're never going to be able to feel, but you want to cut through some of the uh, dings or a chip out that you might have happened when planing it flat. You can bring in a number three and it can ride with the highs and lows of the board and you can focus on one area and get the tear out on that area and move on to something else. The number four and the number five are kind of the all around go to planes. You know, you could do just about anything with either of these two. The number five is commonly referred to as the jack plane because it's sort of the jack of all trades. It's long enough that you can joint with it, but yet short enough if you really needed to, you could smooth with it. Whereas the number four is kind of the opposite um, spectrum. It's not quite long enough to do most jointing, at least by itself, uh, but it's short enough that you can smooth with it and it can be a really nice smoother. As a matter of fact, most smoothers nowadays are number fours. Um, even though I generally prefer my final smoothing to be with the number three, I do often grab my number four for it. The number five, because it's longer, can ride over valleys. So if the board has a dip in it, as this rides over it, the dip might be down far enough that the blade doesn't cut anymore, so it skips over the dip, but it will hit all the high spots. And so this will allow you to flatten a board. But if the board gets longer, you might want to use a longer and longer and longer plane. Basically, the rule of thumb is you want the plane to be at least one half of the length of the board. Um, well, until you start getting to the size of a bench, in which case then you're not going to want a plane that's four foot long. Unless, of course, you really want one of those. <laughs> uh, but if you have a board that is like three foot long, this is all the length of a, of a plane that you need to joint the board really nicely. This will give you a nice flat surface. It will tell you if it's flat. Now, if you don't have one of these longer planes, that's fine. You can flatten a board with a number four or a number three. It's just going to take more work. The problem is the sole will not tell you if it's flat. So this will ride through the, the valleys and hills and will take off a shaving the whole way along. And so you need to use a straight edge to tell you where to take off material with a number four. Whereas when you start getting into a longer plane, the plane will tell you where, where it needs to take off material because it will either cut or it won't cut depending upon if the board is flat. So back into the numbering a little bit, as we start getting up into the number five, there is also a number five and a half and a five and a quarter. The five and a half is just like the four and a half. It is the wider um, two and three eighths wide blade. Whereas the five and a quarter is a thinner blade, much like the number three. Uh, so if you want a a longer plane that's easier to push through the wood, a five and a quarter might be good. Whereas if you want to take off a lot of material very quickly with still having a longer plane, a five and a, a five and a half might work you well. Whereas then you start getting into the six and the seven, they're the same width as the four and a half, but they start getting longer. Um, I personally don't have a whole lot of use for the number six. Um, I just 
it's not something I really want to use. If I want to grab that, I'm going to pull out the number seven. Just a little bit longer, and there really isn't that much of a weight difference between the two. So that's my personal preference, but everyone's a little different. A lot of people really like the number six. The number seven, it's just a longer version of the uh, number six. The number eight, though, the number eight is even wider than the six or seven. The number eight is wider and longer. It's a full 24 inches long. Um, it is a pain to flatten. It takes a lot of work. It is a very, very heavy plane. But once you get this thing moving and you push it through the wood, uh, it doesn't stop. <laughs> it's got a lot of momentum to it, and it's a lot of fun to use. But uh, it's a big, big beast. I have been holding off on restoring this one until I reflatten my bench top, in which case then I'll restore this to, uh, to do the flattening work on it. A lot of fun there. So how do you actually go about choosing which plane should you use for which task? And that really depends on what you're trying to do. There are basically three different things you can be doing. Number one, you can have a plane that takes off a lot of material very quickly. And that is often known as a scrub plane or a four plane. It will have a very heavy camber on the iron and it can take off as much as an eighth inch on each pass. Then you have your general plane. And this is the plane that takes off a moderate amount of material. Um, a lot of times your jointer will fall into that because it's not taking a very light wispy shaving but it is taking off a decent amount and it's trying to get it down to flat. And then you have a plane that takes off a very, very light amount, which is generally your smoother. Um, some people will have another plane that will take off an even less amount, which would often be like the number three or number four or how you set it up. But all of those have more to do with how you set up the mouth. Is it wide open? Is the blade engaged far? How close is the chip breaker to the end? And those things are going to determine how thick of a cut you make. On top of that, you're going to be then figuring out, do you want the plane to be jointing the board? Do you want it to make it flat? Or do you want to just smooth it out? And so you've got to play all those in a balance. My general normal is I have a number five that has a very heavy cambered iron. That is my scrub plane or my four plane. And that's usually the first plane to hit the wood. It is the plane that touches the wood before other planes, otherwise known as a four plane. And that will take off a lot of material. And then I even ha either have my number four or my number five with a fairly heavy cut that will come in and clean out the marks left by the four plane. And it will take a fairly heavy cut. It will still leave some tear out. It's not intended to be a really clean plane. After I've kind of cleaned the wood, then I'll come in with my jointer. And this will be what actually takes it down to flat. Now I will try to get it flat with the heavier cutting plane, but I'll have a jointer set up with a moder moderate cut. This will be a fairly clean cut and it will make the board perfectly flat. And I'll choose a jointing plane depending upon how long the board is. If the board is two foot long, the number five will work great. This will work great up to like three foot long. At four foot long, uh, you're probably gonna be wanting to thinking about a six or a seven because it's starting to get long enough. Anything over four foot, um, you're probably gonna be wanting to look at an eight. It is the, the plane that will do long boards and make them flat right off of the plane. But then once I've actually flattened the board and jointed with a longer plane, then I'm gonna come back here to the smoothers. And I'm going to take off a very delicate, wispy amount in different areas, trying to get rid of any marks that might have been left by the flattening, any tear out that might still be in there from one of the heavier planes. The smoothing plane is then the last plane to touch the wood. So you're kind of working through this progression of taking off a lot of material, getting it, getting it to where you want it to be, flattening it out and getting a nice um, even surface and then smoothing it and making it feel good. And so you kind of want to bounce through them. You can do all of that with one plane. You can have one plane and switch the iron out and put a cambered iron in there and flatten all with one plane. That's kind of what the jack is for because you can do just about anything with a number five. You can joint, you can flatten. Um, it just becomes a little more difficult to smooth because it is so long. Now, a lot of people will then jump into like a block plane for their smoothing plane. But the block plane is not intended for force. Whereas you have a handle on here, you can get behind it and you can push it. A block plane is just intended to rest in the palm of your hand. It's not intended to push, so it's not a, a forceful tool. This is great for doing uh, cambers or cleaning up the ends of boards. Um, anytime you have pegs sticking through, you want to flatten them out. Small items is what a block plane is for. Um, so not as much for your smoothing. So I hope this cleared up a few misconceptions. It is a topic that a lot of people kind of get 
worn out about and it kind of confuses people that no, you really can't use a number five for smoothing or you can't joint with a number four. And really you can use any plane for just about any task. It's just some are gonna be a little bit easier to use than others. And a lot of it has more to do with how the mouth is set up, how deep is the iron cutting. And that is what determines more or less its use. Other than jointing, a longer plane is nice. So yeah, there are a lot of other things and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of other questions, things that I missed or uh, probably should have said, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to answer those. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a fun one to put out and one I've been wanting for a long time. One of these days I'm gonna get a, uh, a five and a half and a five and a quarter and a, uh, a two and a one and I'm gonna do a whole video with a long series of Stanley numbers and I thought that would be kind of fun, but not today. If you did like the video, please hit like and go ahead and smash that subscribe button. I wanna say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason this channel is running today. If you'd like to help out with that, you can find out more at the Patreon link right over here. If you did like this video, feel free to check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.